I want to put up on the screen Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 1. I doubt seriously that this has ever been used as a soul winning verse, but it is. In the New Living Translation, it said there's another serious tragedy that I have seen under the sun, and it weighs heavily on humanity. God gives some people great wealth and honor and everything they could ever want, but then He doesn't give them the chance to enjoy it. It is a curse to be given life, given a family, given money, given a marriage, and all that you in your mind said, this is going to do it for me. After these things arrive, I'm going to be one satisfied individual. The part of this that you may find disturbing is that it says, that God gives human beings things to enjoy, but right before they enjoy it, He takes away their power to enjoy it. To me, it's almost worse than poverty. I have a granddaughter. She's, only, she's not even three years old yet. Her name is Lydia. And let me tell you about Lydia. When she wakes up in the morning, it's a lesson to every person on earth because she gets such a look on her face like, I'm awake! And nothing but good things are gonna happen to me today. She celebrates, look at me, she celebrates every breath that she takes. And grandparents are her unlimited source of that enjoyment. You know, if I could learn to pray the way Lydia asks me and my wife for things. Now I'm going to stop and tell you the next thing. God is preventing your enjoyment of life out of mercy. It's not judgment. It's mercy. I've often thought about the devil. Wouldn't the devil be better off giving everyone everything they wanted, fattening them for the kill, herding them into the slaughter? The devil doesn't even think about good ways to put people in hell. He will deprive you. He will lie to you. He will hurt you. He will injure you. He will do the things that cause people to turn to God. The story that we're about to look at is the story of your life. And your separation from God because He loves you causes Him to interrupt your plans. God messes with your dreams because He loves you. Because you do not want to get good at something that is directing you to hell. You don't want to feel successful at being evil. And the Bible says this, in John chapter 10 verse 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and destroy. I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Now I'm going to look you in the eye. What God wants to give everyone in the room is the power to enjoy their life. One day I was in a hospital room and a young person was discovering they were paralyzed. They said the most heartrending thing, I can't feel my legs. I can't feel my legs. And I saw a look in the doctor's eyes I'll never forget. I don't know how they do it. But I looked at him and I saw something. And when we walked out of the room, he muttered to me, he said, I can't feel my life. He said, that boy can't feel his legs, but I can't feel my life. 
The purpose of living disconnected from God is to have everything stolen from you. To have all the objects, none of the enjoyment. All of the features, none of the meaning. It's not there. You can't feel it. The next thing I discovered is that without right standing with God, when you're not right with God, you have no protection from the thief. You can build your business, build your relationship, build everything, but you have no protection from the thief. You know one of the greatest thrills of my walk with God? Christ is praying for me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, as I'm standing here, Jesus is praying for me. And those of you that know him, he's praying for you. But those of you that don't know Christ, this is what the Bible says. I pray not for the world, but only for those that you have given unto me. So you're unprotected. You see, you're like a plant that's been pulled out by the roots and is sitting in the dry sun because the source of our life is God. The in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, I want to thank those that are helping me to put the verses on the screen. It's invaluable. When we had a smaller tent, this wasn't necessary. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, it says, command those who are rich in this present age not to be arrogant. Boy, there's a movie for you. As a man of God, I'm supposed to walk up to a billionaire and say, I'm not impressed with your stuff because you're getting arrogant behind it. See, your money and your prestige may open doors on earth, but it doesn't move God. It's not important to God. How many of you know it is time for that moment to be understood. The rest of this verse, it says, do not be haughty. Do not trust in uncertain riches. No matter how safe you feel in this room, no matter how endowed you are, no matter how many layers of security to you own, the Bible says you're unprotected. The Bible says your emotions are vulnerable. There's no pill, no chemical, no therapist. By the way, do not pay $300 an hour for a psychiatrist who might be crazier than you are. But the Bible says, do not trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. You see, I love the Word of Faith message because it teaches us that God can pay our bills. It teaches us that God can help us to own a home. But that is not the blessing of Christianity. The blessing of Christianity is not what God gives us. It's that after He gives it to us, He gives us the power to enjoy it. Let me tell you, a quiet night at home with a clear conscience sitting in your own living room with your wife and your kids and no guilt and condemnation is better than all the gold on earth. 